Hi, this is Mount Fuji, the tallest mountain in Japan, and it's also an active volcano. Don't worry, there hasn't been an eruption for over 300 years. And also, contrary to popular beliefs, there are no monsters on Mount Fuji. I said, there's no monsters on Mount Fuji. But at over 12,000 feet tall, it does get very cold up there at the peak, which is why throughout most of the year, the conical-shaped peak is covered with snow. And sometimes, when you're lucky enough to land into Tokyo during clear skies, you'll be treated to this beautiful sight. Now during summer, when some of that snow has melted away, it allows for a short window where the public is allowed to climb Mount Fuji. It is typically between the month of July and September. Now, this zigzaggy line right here, this is the Yoshida Trail. It is the most common route that everyone takes to the peak. Climbing to the summit will take you roughly 5 to 7 hours, and then coming back down will take you another 3 to 5 hours. And last year, with absolutely no mountain climbing experience, my buddy Tam and I decided to climb Japan's tallest mountain all the way to the top. Here is Mount Fuji. If you can see it, <laughs> there was a little bit of scare on the way up. Thank you, mate. Surviving. Surviving. See the summit's just right there. And this is our Malaysian's guide to climbing Mount Fuji. Malaysia truly Asia! Now if you're flying to Japan for the very first time and you speak very little Japanese, you should probably look at getting yourself one of these. This is a pocket Wi-Fi router, and with it, you'll have access to the internet wherever you travel in Japan. Yes, you'll even get data when you're at the very top of Mount Fuji. Hey Liam, this is for you. I'm on top of Mount Fuji. I'm bagging you a fresh bag of Mount Fuji air. And for as little as $4 a day, your pocket Wi-Fi router will turn your smartphone into a translator. How do I get to Shinjuku Station? A navigator meters. Turn right. and your entertainment device. And it will even get you out of trouble when your camper van decides to break down in the middle of Kyoto. Today the engine is not starting. Well, we've called for rescue and rescue is coming. I'm not sure when. We've been to Japan many times and we have never traveled without a pocket Wi-Fi router. It's one of the first things that we booked after getting our flight tickets to Japan. We pre-booked our pocket Wi-Fi router from Japan Wireless and picked it up at the post office at Narita Airport. Once you're done with your trip, simply put the pocket Wi-Fi router in the reply paid envelope that comes with it, and then just drop it off at any mailbox just before you leave the country. Now that we have picked up our pocket Wi-Fi router, we can now navigate our way to Mount Fuji. There are a couple of very simple ways for you to get to Mount Fuji from Tokyo. You can travel either by bus or by train, and both of them would take roughly two hours to get there. The highway bus is obviously the cheaper method to get there, but do make reservations ahead of time as the seats on the bus are limited. For more information on how to get to Mount Fuji from Tokyo, check out the video description below. This time around, you'll notice that we have rented a camper van, which is a really fun way to see Japan. We drove over 2,000 kilometers on this Toyota Hi-Ace camper van, and we visited over 10 Japanese cities. We are currently in Tokyo, and we got a bit lost because of Siri. Hey, don't blame me. You should have taken that left turn. Oops. Anyways, we're finally back on track. And we're making our way to Kawaguchiko, which is a small town in the foothills of Mount Fuji. You gotta have heart. We will be spending the night there, preparing for our debut climb up Japan's tallest mountain. And as you can see, we're loading up on lots of precious protein. There's lots of meat. And we're also carbo-loading. Because tomorrow will be a very long day. And we'll need all the strength that we can master.
So when you come to Mount Fuji uh, in summer, you can't park up at the fifth station. So what you do is you got to park down at the bottom, uh, at the at the base of the mountain, um, and from there you pay parking. It's a thousand yen per car, uh, and then you take the shut the bus up, and the bus shuttles around two thousand yen per person return. And then from there, we got a hike up to 7 Station where you're spending a night and it's a 2 hour hike. From there, from there to the summit, it's going to take us 4 hours. <sighs> We're screwed. This was the weather that greeted us when we got to Mount Fuji's so, fifth station. The Mount Fuji fifth station, as you can see from that, is the 16th of July 2019. And we're heading up to Mount Fuji, yep, in this rain. And we're off! Hiking in the rain. We've been looking forward to this climb for a few months now, and we weren't going to let any rain stop us. Just past six station. Now it's one hour to seven. And that is the climb to seven. See that? Oh my god, I think that is seven, and those are the huts we're staying in. Yeah! And? There's still more to climb. And soon enough, we were higher than the clouds. We are above the clouds. And this was when things started to go a bit wrong for Tam. I'm dying. Fuji, you win. Now acute altitude sickness can occur at 6,600 feet. And we were way above that by now. And the lack of oxygen is slowly taking its toll on Tam. Hi, I'm sorry. Tam, Timothy's mum for dragging Timothy up this mountain. Relations call this Gotong Royo. Gotong Royo, ah, eh? tarik please. Tarik. <sighs> Man, <sighs> when when Jeremy, <sighs> imagine, yeah, there's curry rice waiting for you. Nice, it's warm, it's hot, <sighs> hot coffee, miso soup and a cold beer. When? Can you imagine that? Let's go. Let's go! This is a lesson for my life. Take step by step and step by step and hopefully, fingers crossed, eventually you get to where you're going. Although it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> right, Jeremy? Subscriber by subscriber, subscriber by subscriber, and eventually we'll get there. Rejoice, my friend. He's here? Rejoice. Is this the one coming? Yes. Hallelujah. <sighs> After what felt like the longest two hours of our lives, we were finally at our mountain hut Tomoekan, at the 7th station on Mount Fuji. We quickly devoured two servings of the curry rice, chucked down some icy cold Kirin beer, and then we stood outside to take in this magnificent view. Now after catching a decent night's rest in our small, very cramped private cubicle, which also comes with a handy PowerPoint to charge your devices, 
I was now ready for today's climb to the highest point in Japan. Unfortunately for Tam, he was still not acclimatizing to the high altitude. So, a uh, quick Google search um, has indicated that I may be um, starting to experience mild, uh, mild altitude sickness, feeling uh, lightheaded and I feel like puking a little bit but not actually puked. Anyway, I've decided I'm going to head back down the mountain and uh, Jeremy here will continue on his own up to the peak, up to the summit. Now Tam and I, we've been on some of the most ridiculous adventures together. It's a Friday night in Siam Reap and we're gonna try some spiders. A couple of years ago, we tried driving Malaysia's first national car from Kuala Lumpur to Vietnam. How's the car driving man? Very well. And while our little Proton Saga was stopped at the Cambodian border, we kept going. We've always finished these crazy challenges together. And having already climbed up this far, I told Tam that this would be the only mountain climbing video that we would ever make on this YouTube channel. And that's when he decided to hang in there for a little bit longer. Having only climbed a total of 1,600 feet from the 5th station to the 7th station, this morning we have a colossal task ahead. To reach the summit, we'll have to double our efforts and climb twice as high. We took it very slow and easy at first, taking as many stops as we needed. How do you feel, mate? It's amazing. The high altitude and the stunning views had a different effect on me. I've become very euphoric and I'm simply breathtaken by how stunningly beautiful this world is. And after taking in all the view, I decided to take in some instant ramen. And yes, if you're feeling a bit hungry, you can always buy food up here. Now after my breakfast, I've noticed that Tam was feeling a little bit better. All right, we hit the 8th station and we are 3,000 meters above sea level. Uh, yeah, baby! Yeah! I'm really hoping that is the summit. Power to the top. Adrenaline, adrenaline, kick in, kick in. Final 30 minutes. Yeah. You want to try? Yeah. <laughs> this is how far we've been climbing. Fucking stunning. Alright, Tam. The last 15 minutes is a bit tough, isn't it? So am I. Konnichiwa. Almost there, go, go! <laughs> and just like what Tam said, you just have to take it step by step and eventually, you will get to the top. And after months of planning, and a little bit of anxiety, and almost 24 hours on Mount Fuji, we are now finally at the summit. And interestingly enough, we weren't the only Malaysians on top that day. Meet Stephen, he's from Penang and he takes people on adventures up Mount Fuji. 
Malaysia through the Asia. Hey Alex, we made it to the top of Mount Fuji. Now Feast and Furious is a delicious cafe in my hometown Kuching and the owner Alex gave us a suspect card to take up Mount Fuji. Thank you. Thank you. We have just reached the summit and we are coming down. Ooh. Yeah. Finally done. It's done, it's done. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Hello there! Thank you for watching. We hope our experience will help you make better preparations for your climb up Mount Fuji. Of course, if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to show your support. Now, of course, Mount Fuji is closed this year due to the coronavirus, which is a bit sad, just like my hair situation here. But for the first time in 30 years, there has been reports that there are zero climbing accidents up in Mount Fuji. So I guess that's the silver lining there. Hopefully 2021 will be a better year for everyone and hopefully by then, our Malaysian's Guide to Climbing Mount Fuji will still be relevant. If you have been up to Mount Fuji, please share your experience with us in the comment section below. Again, thank you for watching. We hope you stay safe wherever you are. And oh, I just want to say thank you to my cousins, Frederick Toh and Felicia Ma for FedExing those Malaysian flags to us in Melbourne just before we left for our camper van trip in Japan. Thanks guys. Thank you and we will see you in the next one. Bye! Today was a wet and wild day, so today we have to... Our cash got wet, so we have to dry our cash.